able to position herself, guys, so you can actually see her. You can catch the actual video as she does this. If you are part of her Facebook community and you can get on her Facebook Live, you will actually see the midday motivational call. Oh, it is on and popping. Do I got my Chevin in the building with you? I am here, Mr. Dion. Thank you so much, sir. How are you this afternoon? Hello. I am so fabulous. I'm still riding away. That's what's up. I know, right? It's so wonderful when you have a wave that you can just keep on riding and keep on riding because that big boat that came by and created that wave really did it some justice, right? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. All right. Well, guys, I hope that you are ready. Um, Chairman D, I, I, I thank you so much for uh, taking on the call this morning and getting everything cranked up and allowing me to get on this Facebook Live. I don't know what was going on with my computer, but we are here and I see all the wonderful people joining on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute out the lines so that everyone that's listening... And they can, can um, themselves. Can hear, and I'm going to mute out the tones. Entry people tones are coming on. in and out. Exit tones are on. All right, and guys, what I'm going to do is I am going to jump right into this. So I want to welcome everybody to today's midday motivational call. My name is Tracy Walker, and um, today is July the 30th, 2018. And guys, I want to talk to you today about having a winner's image. And so if you're watching this on Facebook or if you're on the call, you do have a, a minute or so to go ahead and spread the word. You do have a minute to share this broadcast on Facebook. You do have a minute to send that last minute text, whether send that last minute email or whatever it is in, in your Facebook groups, um, in your team networks and things of that sort. Because today, what I'm going to be talking to you about, you know, it's Money Mondays, right? And on Money Mondays, you have to recognize that in order for you to attract the things that you want, you've got to have the right image to begin with. You've got to have the right image to begin with. So I want to welcome everybody on to the call. Uh, and as I'm going throughout this broadcast on today, guys, I want you to show me some love. Like if you hear what I'm saying, I mean, really hear what I'm saying. You feel what I'm saying. It's giving you goosebumps and things like that. Please share the broadcast. Make sure you give some, some hearts, some thumbs up, all that great stuff. And for all of you guys that are listening in on the physical phone, I want you to give your own virtual love and um, and thumbs up by exerting the energy in your spirit, right? Exerting the energy in your spirit. And I promise you, I promise you, that's the way that we are all connected and I will feel it. And as long as I'm feeling the energy and the vibe, I promise you that the that the most high, the good Lord above will not stop speaking through me. You guys know that happens sometimes, right? And so if I feel it, if I feel the spirit, Y'all know what's going to happen. Where are we going to bless some lives today? We're going to bless some lives regardless because I feel the spirit all the time, right? Especially when I'm talking and speaking about things that matter in our lives. We live in a world where, you know, we, we went to school. A lot of us we went to school and our kids are in school and they don't really care. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you have to think about it. Like when my son is like, mom, I don't want to go to school. I feel him sometimes, right? Because I know overall, you know, that he's four. So he's got to go because there's things he's got to learn at four that he's got to learn, right? But you guys know what I'm talking about. When you get to like 14, 15, 16, and I'm not saying don't go. What I'm saying is I feel the children. I feel them. You know why I feel them? Because in reality, knowing what I know now about the school system, they waste so much of our time. They do. Just get to the point of what it is I need to be successful in life. And let's stop wasting all this time with these subjects that have zero to do with my interests in my life. Now, if you want me to have a little bit of knowledge about it, I get it. But what you're doing is you're making me sit in the classroom with a whole bunch of people and you're trying to make us all the same person. You're trying to make us all have the same grades. You're trying to make us all have the same interests. You're trying to make us all think about math at 11. We got to all think about English at 12. We got to all have lunch at one. We got to all go outside and play at two. Like you're trying to make us all do the same thing at the same time. And so I feel the kids when they're not feeling that because everybody's different. And some people just want to do math all day long because that's their interest. Some people just want to do music all day long because that's their interest. Some people might want to just play outside and do that because maybe they're going to be a fitness trainer one day and they actually just want to be at the gym all day long. I mean, I can't say that it's wrong that they feel that way, but you guys understand what I'm saying. And so what happens is we 
start to conform early on and we never build what we call a winner's image. We just build the image that school is telling us to build. We don't build our own winner's image. That's why you can speak to uh you can speak to a teenager, you can speak to a young person in college and so many of them don't even know what they want to do in life. So many of them don't have a clue as to what their dreams and aspirations are. They're just kind of doing what their mom wants them to do. Or they're just kind of doing what their dad wants them to do. Or they're kind of doing what their coach wants them to do at school or whatever sport. He's kind of doing what the grade and the college system says for them to do so they can kind of move along the stream. And I am here to tell you that once you get out of that, once you spend, you know, 12, 16, 18 years of that mess and you really get a grip on what's going on, you realize, I don't even know what it is I want to do. I don't even know what it is I want to do. I don't have an image of what it is I want to do. I don't know anything about what it is that's going on in my life. And so now you sitting back and you 22 years old and you just now starting to figure it out. You're just not starting to figure it out. But now you've got the loans on your back. Now you got the credit cards on your back. Now you got your parents on your back because now you got to find a job or you got to get out the house or you got to do this, you got to do that. You got everybody on your back and all this pressure starts to build up at these tender ages of 20 and 21 and 22. Why? Why does it build up at that young age? Oh, I know why. Because nobody taught you how to build a winner's image. You've been building somebody else's image for all of your whole entire life. And when you finally get out of that school, when you finally get out of your parents' house, you don't know what the hell's going on. And so the question is, are we really preparing? Are we really preparing our children and ourselves for living that life of abundance? And so what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is the winner's image and how you can begin to build a winner's image. It doesn't matter to me whether you know uh, this information. Most of you do not know this information because if you knew this information, you would be applying this information on a daily basis. It doesn't matter. As we heard one of our great leaders speak on yesterday, Mr. David Emanitier, there is a process eventually eventually you will start to get what you want to get as long as you're uh, managing and nurturing and massaging the process so today what I'm going to do is I want to talk to you uh, about the ones and I got my notes in front of me because there's a little bit of detail guys and I, and I want you guys to understand that you cannot get through life and you will not be the successful person that you want and you will not have the things that you want and you will not live the life that you want and you will not be able to go and be with who you want if you can't first create the image in your mind of that winner that you desire to be. Right. It's one thing to want to be successful, but it's another thing to know and see what that success looks like and what it feels like. And now you want a journey. Now you're literally on a journey and you're literally on a mission. If you're not on a mission or a journey to be great because you're just hoping that you get something, then you are you're shooting yourself in the foot, essentially. OK, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And so, guys, what I want to talk to you about is the three phases of uh, building your winner's image. There's three phases. And I want you to think of it like a pyramid. Do, 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 right. Well, I'm a Delta, so that always works for me. Pyramids always work for me. <laughs> Even if y'all don't like pyramids, I understand that a pyramid is the strongest structure that there is. Okay. So even if you are an AKA, or Zeta or whatever, I have to talk to you in terms of pyramids because pyramids is what we're talking about today, okay? And so when you're building the winner's image, I want you to draw a pyramid on your piece of paper or uh, whatever that you have. Hopefully you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, well, maybe you can just listen in. It's great. You're going to have to go back to this Facebook Live and replay it when you get it at, a, at another time so that you can actually get the information down. But I want you to literally write this down if you are in a position to write this down. If you cannot come back, come back, listen, watch this and write this down. So it is a pyramid. And at the top, the pinnacle of the pyramid, the pinnacle of the pyramid is you're going to write number one and you're going to put fantasy. Number one is going to be fantasy at the top. The bottom left base OK, the bottom left base of the pyramid, you're going to put a number two and you're going to put theory. OK, and then the bottom right base, you're going to put number three and you're going to put fact. All right. So you should have fantasy at the top, 
You should have theory at the bottom left of the pyramid and you should have fact at the bottom right of the pyramid. Now, we're going to talk about phase one. Phase one is the fantasy period. See, the fantasy period is where you have to start dreaming up this stuff. Like the fantasy period is where you've got to really start getting a hold of what it is that you think would be amazing. Like, you know what? It sure would be nice to have, to live, to be, to attract, to whatever it is, right? To feel like you have got to get so involved in that process that it really, it, it seems like a fantasy to you. And that's what, that's what we love our kids to do is to imagine right? It's to imagine that Spider-Man is jumping over and getting Captain America or to imagine Batman flying through that Batman car. Like it's okay for the kids to imagine and we look at it and we encourage it. But then when it's time for you to sit down and imagine, you act like you don't have that skill. Well, you do have the skill is that you stopped imagining because that's what I'm saying. That system that we were in discouraged you from building a winner's image and starts to, started to encourage you to build an image that fits along with the cloning and the robotics of the society that they want you to fit in. And that doesn't work for you. You know it doesn't work for you because you're uncomfortable at your job. You don't like that job. You know it doesn't work for you because you're uncomfortable around those people. You don't like being around those people. You know it doesn't work because you're uncomfortable around the people that talk certain spirituality and certain this and certain that. That's not your cup of tea. That's not your group. That's not your alignment. You know it's weird or you know it's not right because you feel weird. You feel when I'm gonna tell you guys, I grew up, I've always felt so weird around certain groups of people and I felt weird around large groups. I mean, believe it or not, guys, I really am an introvert, right? Believe it or not, I really am an introvert. People that know me know like I'm a homebody, I chill, I don't really have to have a whole bunch of people at my house. I'm not always on the phone constantly, unless it's business, but I'm not chit-chatting on the phone. I'm not gossiping. I'm not like, hey girl, let's go over here, let's go over there. I'm really kind of weird like that. Right. I'm really kind of weird like that. And it's 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 like this introvert, extrovert type of quality that some people have. Right. And a lot of people wouldn't know that because they only see me in an extroverted light, which is the, the, the environment that I am comfortable in. You see me in the environment that I am comfortable in, which is that entrepreneurial environment, which is the environment where people are striving for success, where people do have goals, where people do have dreams. I'm comfortable there, so it's easy for me to come alive there. But I am not comfortable in these other situations like these networking events, a lot of them, some of them I am, but a lot of them I'm not because I just feel like the people are just so phony and fake and oh my God, I can't do it, right? I, I just, when I go to like a party or something, I'm just like, oh my God, I don't, I don't like these people. They're not doing anything. They're wasting time. Like I want to be at home. Home. I'd rather be watching, you know, something else. I'd rather be looking at a Tony Robbins. I'd rather be watching Luke Longmire on a tray learning the gold setups. Like I'd rather be doing something like that. It's weird. Okay. So that's why for me, it's easier to come home and fantasize about what I want because it's so easy for me to look at what I don't want and say, I don't want that and come back home and start to create that or already be at home and be in a position to start creating that. So this interest, so maybe some of you guys feel like that, like you're kind of this introvert, but you can be an extrovert if you were positioned in the right environment. So if you are feeling uncomfortable in the environment that you are in because you know it's not for you, you know it doesn't fit your mold, then it's time that you start shifting into your own fantasy where you do become comfortable. You do create the environment in your mind first that does fit and that does make you feel good and that does make you want to go out there and jump off the roof and you know be pumped up about your goals and your dreams and so the very first step to even starting this fantasy is you've got to identify some people that have what you want and why people that have what you want and why Right. So, for example, I've got six people's names written down. Right. Six people's names that, that that I have written down. I won't give you their names, but I'll tell you why I, so I have their name and I have the reason or the quality about them that I that I enjoy, that I like and that I fantasize about. Right. And this is just me being transparent because I want you to understand that this is an exercise, guys, where you got to get to know yourself. You got to get to know yourself. And if you're not willing to go there. 
If you're not willing to go there and be real with who you are and wanting to know yourself, then how are you going to then become the self that you want to become? Because you wouldn't even know it if it slapped you in the face, right? So you've got to do this. So the step number one and the fantasy and the fantasy is you want to write down at least six people in the world, in society, in your family. It doesn't make a difference. You want them to be influencers, though. You want them to be influencers, though, because you don't want somebody that's not influential. You understand? And they have influence in their own right. So I've got six people. My first person, I won't tell you the names of the people. I don't want to try to dis encourage or discourage someone to follow or this or that. But my first person, the reason why, uh, what I fantasize about with not them, but what I fantasize, the quality I fantasize about that they have is influence, right? Influence. I fantasize about having influence over thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people all the time. I see myself in a, I used to say all the time, but speaking, I still see it, but I just say, look, you got here in Atlanta, you've got Phillips Arena, right? You got the new uh, Mercedes Benz um, Stadium. Like I can see myself in that stadium, in those stadiums, like a Beyonce, like a Jay-Z, like a whoever, and you have, you know, 30, 40,000 people there to hear and see you. I see that. And so this particular person has that level of influence that I fantasize about me having also that level, if not more, of influence. My second person, they have toys, like the, the materialistic things in life, right? The cars, the houses, you know, the all the extras that go along with stuff like the the house managers, the butlers, the chefs, the the in home nannies, like all of that stuff, right? This person has that. So I like the toys. I like the materialistic things that are that that can be manifested from the fantasy that I have. The third person is they have the hustle. Right. There's the hustle that I know. I'm like, OK, I got to get to work today. If I don't feel like doing it. I know I got to get to work. And I think about this person. They don't ever stop. This person doesn't ever stop. Even if there's something going wrong in their life, you would never know. Or if you if you if they do have something going on, they're telling you about what they have going wrong and they're still moving along. So they don't ever stop. Nothing stops them. So that's the hustle part. The fourth person uh, is empowering the people. I have a, I have a person that, you know, I, I, that I look at. Like, there's a way that they are able to empower the people. Right. So having influence is one thing, but empowering the people is a whole different thing. My fifth person, they have a loving family. Right. Just a whole loving family. And like I've always wanted that when I was a kid. Right. I grew up um, in a single parent household for the majority of my life. And so I always wanted like, you know, back in the day when I was really concerned with Christmas and stuff like that, I always wanted like the family with the bonfire and the marshmallows and to go outside and sing all the Christmas carols. And so what I found was that kind of growing up, like when I had boyfriends and stuff, if they had families like that, I loved it. I, if you want to sing Christmas carols and you're going to have a party at your house, a family party at your house, right? And I'm 17, I'm 18 years old, and, and now I can go to such and such house for their family's um, Thanksgiving or their family's Christmas. I love doing that. And I still love doing that environment that that indicate that there's love and that there's um, that there's family. It doesn't have to be a lot because God is blessing me right now, like me and my pumpkin, right? There's so much love between me and Josiah that is crazy, like literally, right? You know what I'm saying? Not that kind of love, but you know what I'm saying? A true, natural, like good love between a mother and a son, like that we have. Do you understand what I'm saying? My His brothers and sisters, there's that natural love, even though I'm not their biological mom, there's still that feeling of family and things like that that I enjoy when I'm with them. I love being around those other children. Why? Because it still gives me that whole fantasy, that feeling of family, right? So that's something that I've always desired growing up, and I still have that. The last person is... Um, um, I, I watched this person and kind of studied this person and, and what this person um, resonates is living their dream. Like I've got a friend that literally went from the time that we were in college all the way up through living um, his dream in like major league baseball, like for like 20 years playing baseball and is super well known and has the life, has the wife, has the kids, even has grandkids now because his kids um, has started having kids. And now I think like two of his sons, one of his sons is playing professional baseball. I mean, it's that, 
right? Like living the dream and doing what you truly love and being able to be in conversation with people like this is so rewarding for me. So you've got to A, identify at least six people that have different qualities of the things that you want and you build them in your fantasy as you think about these things. And if you can't, if you can't grab hold of these fantasies or these aspects of them, then it'll be hard for you to craft it out for yourself because now you're just trying to find and snatch something versus find a person, grab a quality or characteristic of that person and pull it in into your realm. Okay. Now that you have these things, you have to start asking yourself these questions. And, and David Amenitia said some stuff last night, those that were on the call, he said some stuff last night, like, you know, what's your teachability index? Essentially, if you guys have never studied Kevin Trudeau, then you might not fully understand everything he was talking about. But I studied Kevin Trudeau. So I understand my boy, Derek Scott, I know you study Kevin Trudeau, right? Things of this sort. And so there's something called a teachability index and say, well, you know, are you willing to how coachable are you and you know how willing are you to change how willing are you to change and that's like your teachability index right if you're coachable but you don't want to change then that's zero sum if you're not coachable but you say you're willing to change it's still a zero sum so you don't have an index you don't have a teachability index right so what happens is when you look at these people and you look at all the things that they have going on in their life you have to ask yourself a few questions how do they dress right what do they study and that's really really i want you to get into their inner being their inner being right what do they study how do they manage their time right? Um, who do they associate with? How do they meet and greet people? Um, how do you and others view them? How do you view them? How do you think others view them? What is their personal life like? Or the part that they show you? What does it appear to be like? Because if they, it appears to be a certain way, it may not be all peaches and cream, but if they're showing you the positive aspects, you can grab hold of those positive aspects and pull them into your own realm. Do you understand? You can pull them into your own realm. Uh, what kind of automobile do they drive? Are they a service oriented person? Are they recognized in their industry? See, these are the things that you need to know about those six people. Right. And if you can start to understand that and start to, you know, mold yourself around that, don't worry about what school tried to mold you into because you already been molded into something and someone you don't even like. You've been molded already. So if you think this is about brainwashing you, it really is. Let me just keep it truly 100. It really is about brainwashing you. You know why? Because your brain is dirty right now. You filled it up with all the crap that you don't even need. You filled it up with all the imagery that doesn't serve you. You filled it up with all the thoughts and the visions and the concepts and the beliefs and all of the religions and all of this stuff that doesn't even serve you. And then you get mad when somebody like me says you need to be brainwashed. When something is dirty, it needs to be washed period. And it's dirty. It's dirty because you look at your life and you don't like what you see, or you don't feel good about it, or you want drastically more. It's dirty. And so we have to wash it. And how are we going to wash it? We're going to wash it by inserting new thoughts, new ideas, new feelings. And we're going to use the images of people that God has given us as examples out in the world. We're going to use those people as our little muses. We're going to use these people as our muses. And we're going to extract things that we love and admire and adore and appreciate about them. And we're going to now start fantasizing about these things in our own lives. So we're going to get rid of the dirt and we're going to start putting in the pure. All right. So, yes, we are brainwashing you because you what you live is dirty if you don't like it. If you like it, then fine then you don't need to be on this call. But if you don't like it and you want more, you feel like you deserve more, there's a breakthrough you're trying to encounter, then you have to wash out the dirt and put in the clean and the pure, all right? That's how that's going to work. So now that you have that, you have the people, you have the aspects that they uh, that they project, and now you have the how they dress, what do they drive, you know, what's their family life like, are they influencers, do people appreciate them, all that stuff, you know, do, how do people view them, all that. Once you have all of that, now you need to write down your fantasy. 
See, and some of y'all not going to do that. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road. So you want to listen to me all the time, but you don't want to do what I ask you to do. See, there's a there's something, you know, my mentor said last night on the call, like you a fan, you a fan. He said it, he said it at the event, like you a fan and don't be a fan when you say that I'm your coach and I'm your mentor. Don't be my fan. I don't need a fan. What I want is someone who is listening to me, who's being coached by me and who's then doing it and then and then transitioning their life because of what I know and what I am sharing, what's being shared through me out in the world into you. So when my mentor says, Tracy, I want you to do A, B, C and D, I just look at him and I say, OK, I'm going to do A, B, C and D, even if in my mind, I don't even know how that's going to happen. Even if in my mind, I feel like, why you got me doing that? Even in my mind, if I'm like, what the world he talking about? All I know is he tells me to do something that's related to my goals and my dreams. And I look and I say, well, yep, he does have what I want. He must know I'm just going to do it. It's kind of like that. You just do what you're told to do. OK, you learn it as a kid and then you also learn how to do what you were told to do by people who didn't have what you wanted. That's how you got screwed. You got screwed by just taking on that ideal with everybody. And that's not something that I want my child to do. I don't need him or want him listening to every single body who appears to be in authority just because they say they in authority. He has to have the discernment to listen to the people who have what he wants. Now, it doesn't mean he has to be disrespectful to the people that don't have what he wants, but he does not need to internalize and listen to those people. Do you understand? He does not have to listen to them. And that's what's important. You have been listening to people who don't have what you want and you're confused about why you don't have what you want. Thank you, Bucky. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So this is what you have. You have to write the fantasy down. Write it down. Write it down. This is where the rubber meets the rope. Are you going to do what I am instructing you to do for step number one, which is the fantasy. So write it down. And you can start by saying, I am so happy and grateful now that I am living my dream, as mine says, influencing millions of people all over the world to take control of their income, to get to speak on stages in beautiful gowns and designer attire, showing people what success looks like. My son gets to go with me and experience a life of luxury. My husband loves and supports me fully, and I admire his drive and business acumen that helps to propel our family forward. I get to buy whatever I want and have the top educators on staff for Josiah. I wake up every day and enjoy the sound of the waterfall from the pool in my backyard. It feels so good to know I am debt-free. All my bills are paid, and financially, we're able to do whatever we want, whenever we want. I thank God for blessing me with the mind to never give up and to always press forward because of my mental attitude. I have attracted... Uh, all this extra stuff, right? My husband, right? <laughs> um, honors me as a woman and appreciates me and my work. I am so grateful now that I have my 10,000 square foot dream home with butlers, cooks, and an in-house nanny. I am so in love with myself and who I know I am. I knew I would be ultra successful both on the business front and on the home front. And I am so at peace now that my dreams of having experienced my life in this way has manifested as my reality. I love my life. Do you understand? You got to write it down. Like some of y'all don't write it down. My junk is written down. I just read it to you. I just read it to you. Right. And how often do you even go back and read your fantasy? Well, first, you got to write your fantasy down. Then you got to go back and read your fantasy and remind yourself of what you're dreaming about. So that's number one. OK, remember, we're building a winner's image. That's number one. That's the fantasy part. Number one at the top of the pinnacle in the pyramid. OK, now. You have to test your fantasy. Mommy, did you just start it the Monday call? Yes, this is the Monday call. Okay. You listening? Yes. Okay, thank you. So now what we have to do is we have to test the fantasy. Test the fantasy. And here's how you test your fantasy. There's one simple question that you ask yourself to test the fantasy. I hope y'all are ready. And you should be writing this down. Write this down. Here's the test question. Am I able, okay, so the question is, are you able to live your life in the manner your fantasy suggests? Write yes or write no. Are you able, are you able to live your life in the way that your fantasy suggests? 
Are you able? In other words, has God given you the ability? We're not talking about how to get there yet. We're not talking about all that other stuff that, that really consumes people from, you know, that consumes them when they don't get to where they want to get to. The question I'm asking you is, are you able? Are you able to live that life that your fantasy suggests? And if you are able to live the life that your fantasy suggests, then you need to write the big word, yes. Shakino. Yeah, Shakino's mom. You got to write the big word, yes. Because now you've essentially tested your fantasy. That means that your fantasy is, is possible. Because if you're writing down a fantasy and then you don't believe it's possible, well, then you can exit. You don't even need to go, need to, go to step two. Because you got to get into the realm where you believe that what you want is possible for you. So that's how you test your fantasy is if you do that. The next thing is, are you willing? Are you willing? So now that you know it's possible, am I able? Am I able? Yes. Am I able? Yes. Okay. Am I willing? Am I willing? See, some of y'all not willing. Willing to do what? Are you willing to make sizable investments in yourself? Are you willing to go where you have to go? Are you willing to do what you have to do? Are you willing to change what you have to change? Are you willing to let go of what you must let go of? Are you willing to move where you have to move? Some of y'all got to move. You got to move to a different place. Some of y'all do. Not that geographical location is the answer, but some of y'all do have to move because the energy ain't right. Are you willing to take direction when it's required? Are you willing to do what your mentor tells you to do and take the direction? Are you willing to continue in the face of failure? Some of y'all quit way too fast. You've been doing something for six months and now you're quitting. You've been doing something for a year and now you're quitting. You've been doing something for two years and now you're quitting, but you're 40 and you're 50 years old. Do you know how much two years is compared to the whole time you've been, the other 48 years you've been doing something wrong? You ain't quit doing the stuff wrong for 48 years. You 50, you haven't been, you've been doing something wrong 48 years. And now you learn how to do something right and because it doesn't go right in two years, you're going to go back to doing the wrong thing you've been doing for the 48 years? If you had the same tenacity to do what's wrong all that time, but instead do what's right all that time, we'd have way more happy, successful people in life. Stop doing the wrong thing over and over and over and over and over. And then the minute somebody introduces you to something that can help you change your life because it's different and it's new and it's hard, you're not willing to do the right thing. You're not willing to do what you got to do. Are you willing to commit yourself 100% to living the way you choose to live? Some of y'all think it's a good idea versus it's the only option. Some of y'all think it would be nice, but oh well. You go right back, right? Are you willing to even possibly receive ridicule? Are you willing to receive ridicule, humiliation, and rejection as part of the price to win? See, you don't know what the price of success is. You think success is supposed to be this easy little thing because that's what the world shows you. That's what, that's what it looks like on social media. That's what it looks like on IG. That's what it looks like on Facebook. That's what it looks like. But what you don't see behind the scenes of almost every successful person are the tears, are the nights where they're trying to figure it out, are the days that they're being ridiculed by their, by their peers, why they're feeling humiliated because of the way life seems to have gone against them, but in real life, it's just setting them up. By the way, that they have, um, they have experienced, you know, the the the, the backstabbing and the and the uh, um, and the betrayal of people that they love. Like you don't see that part. You don't see the parts that's actually sharpening the iron. All you see is a more sharpened iron. But some of you guys aren't willing to pay that price because you don't think that you can or you don't think that it's it's the price. You think it's the devil. And because you have been taught to think that things that challenge you are the devil, then your only goal is to just keep praying that the devil stop. Versus you understanding that's not the goal. The goal is for you to pursue and overcome. 
So you're asking for the wrong thing in your prayers, number one. You have a misconception of what you're supposed to be doing on your journey to success. And then you're, then you're confused when you don't have the success that you want. When you've been doing the wrong thing 48 years and you quit doing the wrong thing, you quit doing the right thing after two. So you've got to be willing. So the moment that you answered the question about your willingness and your ability, now your fantasy becomes what we call a theory, a theory, right? Which is really, yeah, I guess that's it, right? Which is really the base of the pyramid now, right? So now we've got our fantasy down, right? And you've got to answer, uh, are you able and are you willing? Once you're able and you're willing, and the answer is yes, now it becomes a theory. Now you have to do what? You have to turn your theory into fact. How do you turn your theory into fact, okay? So here's the thing. You gotta do five things, okay? You gotta do five things to turn your theory into fact. Now this is work. You want money? You want money? You wanna get the bag? You wanna get the bag and you're doing your trades and it's not working or you're selling those products and services and nobody's buying? You're doing all of that, it's not working? Let me tell you why it's not working. Because your winner's image is jacked up. You don't have a winner's image. This is the work. You know when they say faith without works is dead? Everybody think it's the physical work. Everybody think it's the act of going to the meeting. Everybody thinks that it's the act of doing the presentation. And although those things are important, as you also know, it has to be created in the spiritual realm first before it will manifest in the physical. And if you do not do the work such that it is created properly in the spiritual realm, then you don't have anything to manifest manifest in the physical realm. Mommy? Yes. Jamie? This is Jamie. Oh, right. Where, where? Oh, yeah. Ray. Ray said, happy belated birthday, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you, pumpkin. Right? So you have to create it in the spiritual first before you can manifest it in the physical. So the faith, the belief that you can do something without working towards it means that it's dead. It doesn't have a chance. It doesn't have a chance. So the work is what? The work is in the spiritual realm. The work is in creating your winner's image. You gotta do this work because the faith without this work is dead. You have to understand that. And you have to start adhering to what I am telling you. So now we're gonna go from fantasy to theory. And then we we did that. Now we're gonna go from theory to a fact. We're gonna make it a fact. Okay, Um, make it a fact. So here's a daily five point program for manifesting or materializing that winner's image. Write it down. Write it down. Number one, you need to relax 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, morning, noon and night or 20 minutes, three times a day, morning, noon and night. That's an hour a day. Cut off that news. Quit reading that newspaper. Cut off some of that TV, you got an hour. Get off Instagram scrolling, get off Facebook scrolling, you got an hour. Come off that patio smoking, come off the this drinking, just give yourself an hour. If you wanna go back to those things, then do what you need to do, go back to those things. But give yourself an hour, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, and 20 minutes in the evening to do what? Relax and do what? Clear your mind and dream. Relax, clear your mind, and dream. Say relax, Saya. Relax. Clear your mind. Clear your mind. And dream. And dream. That's right. Say 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Three times a day. Three times a day. That's right. That is the prescription the doctor is ordering. And some of y'all won't do that. But clean up are you okay? But if the doctor gave you a bunch of pills and medicine that make you have memory loss, by memory loss, you'll take those pills. You'll take those pills that make you feel drowsy and woozy and high to get rid of that back pain, but you won't take the non-invasive medicine that'll help you live the life that you want to take, that you want to live. You go to the doctor and pay your $35 copay to go get some uh, some medicine, to go put that cast on that arm, to go put that brace around that neck and pay those medical bills. You'll do that. And give you a shot. And get a shot, right? 
you're going to get that. But now you don't want to do this work, which prevents, which is preventative medicine, really. This is preventative. Okay. So number one is relax 20 minutes, three times a day, right? To do what? Clear your mind, visualize and dream. The second thing that you have to do is you have to change. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You got to change. Here's what it says in change. Completely review how you have been living. Completely review how you have been living and decide what changes must be made to become the person you have visualized. That is change. That is change. You have visualized yourself being in your new image and then change them. And then change them. So review how you've been living and who you've been. And then think about the person in your fantasy. And then identify the things that you need to change about you to then be the person in the fantasy and you need to change them. It's as simple as that. If that person don't smoke or drink, you need to stop smoking and drinking. If that person eats healthy, you need to eat healthy. This is the person in your visuals, visualization now. If that person don't just blow their money, then you need to stop blowing your money. If that person lives a little bit more frugal and meek, then that's okay. You need to become that person. If that person um, is more kind and more loving and more giving, you need to become that person. You understand what I'm saying? You need to change. And you want to keep being the same person. You want to keep, you know, over talking everybody. You want to keep knowing everything. You want to keep doing all this stuff. And you don't want to listen. You don't want to learn. You don't want to become the person that you're saying that you want to be. Instead, you keep staying the same. And you keep staying the same, giving yourself the impression that you're changing. You're not. You're fooling yourself. The third thing that you have to do is you need to watch. Okay, what I'm going to say is that you need to watch the people because there's this, a whole different thing. But you need to watch the people that you have your, your list of six. You need to watch them more regularly. You need to watch them more regularly. And this time when you watch them, don't watch them for their content. Watch them in terms of their characteristics. So, for example, if you watch and you listen to Grant Cardone or if you listen and you watch Gary Vee or you listen and you watch. David and Manitia, or you listen and you watch whoever you listen and you watch in your company, your leadership. Don't watch the, oh my goodness, their video is so dope. Don't watch, oh my God, I need a videographer like that. Don't watch that superficial stuff. Watch them. How are they speaking? What is it that they are saying? What is it that they are experiencing? Watch. Be an observer. Be a people watcher. Watch. Okay? For at least 60 minutes a day, watch. Watch the people that have what you want so that you can start to take on their characteristics like a chameleon. Say chameleon. Chameleon. You got to change it up. Say change it up, boo. Change it up. That's right. You got to change it up. Okay? So you got to do that. The four things you have to do is you got to listen. Listen to the people that have the image and the life that you want. Listen to them. Why are you not listening? Why are you looking and repeating and putting quotes on Facebook and doing all this type of stuff just to get likes and fans, but you're not doing it, you're not listening, and you're not adhering to it? You're just being a fan. You're being a fan. The people that are out here where their life callings are to help people to change their life, they don't need fans. Do they enjoy it? Of course they do, because that means more people are watching and tuning in. But ultimately, if you were doing what they were asking you to do and living the way that they were instructing you and taking the actions and taking the mentorship and taking all the instructors instructions that they were giving you, if you were doing that, I know for a fact they would be that much happier. You know why? Because there would be that many more testimonials of people that they could leverage and use to say that here's what I'm doing in my life and here's what I'm trying to help people do and people are actually doing it. People are actually doing it. And any coach, any person that is trying to help change people's lives, they want to see the manifestations of the change in the people's lives. That's the way it works. That's what gives us the joy. That's what gives us the satisfaction that our life is now with meaning. Now Zachary's mom. Yep, that's texting. Okay. The fifth thing that you need to do is you need to communicate. Okay. You need to make a list of 15 winners. 
that you respect, stop doing that, that you respect and would like to socialize with. Y'all not going to do this part. I already know you're not going to do this part because you're scared. You scared? I You're not scared, are you? Yeah. I know you're not scared because mommy teaching you not to be scared of success, right? Yes. That's right. Say, I love success. I love success. Okay. Listen, you can't be scared of success. See, this isn't about failure, what I'm going to tell you. This is about success. Nothing to fail at. It's just you doing the successful acts. So what it says is make a list of 15 winners that you respect and would like to socialize with. And you need to phone one of them every day to say hello and ask if there's any way that you can help them. Which would mean that if you had 15 people, that would mean day one, you call person one and ask. You say hello, is there anything I can help you with? Day two, you call the second person. Day three, you go up to day 15. So you've gotten through all 15 in the first half of the month. Then day 16, you go back to the first person. Hey, it's Tracy Walker just checking in to say hello. See, there's anything I can help you to do. And then you do it a second time for the second half of the month. That means you'll be speaking to 15 successful people that you would like to socialize with twice a month. Twice a month. You guys understand what I'm saying? If you want to be around certain people, you got to start networking and being around certain people. But here's my thing. I don't like necessarily being around a certain people in these networking events because I feel personally like a lot of those environments are not authentic. I don't. I feel like all everybody is trying to do is shove their business card on you. That's why I don't take business cards. I accumulate business cards. Do I have business cards? Yeah, I got business cards. I got a whole stack of business cards right up here. In fact, here's one. Here's one right here. I got business cards. People are like, oh, you have a business card? Nope. But I got business cards. All day long, I got business cards. Okay? Got a whole stack of them right up here. Right? Here's, here's several of them. Right? I got business cards. I got nice business cards. But do I take business cards with me to these events? I sure do not. You know why? Because I'm not going to be the person giving out the information. I want to receive the information. I want to receive because I'm the person that understands the power of follow-up. I'm the person that understands I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm not trying to sell you anything, in other words. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see who's a good fit for what I've got going on. And just by exchanging business cards all day and everybody got a, a bag full of business cards, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing to me. To me. I operate different. I told you I'm weird in those environments. I'm not doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Everybody else is doing that. I do the opposite. Everybody else is giving out business cards. Okay, I'll just receive the business cards. Do I have business cards? Yes, I do. Do I might do I might pass my I pass them out to a one or two particulars because I really want to have a, a connection with? Yeah, I might do that. But I'm not here. Oh, here's my card. Call me. Here's my card. My name is Tracy Walker. I do this. I do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. I go and I just sit back and I kind of listen. I watch. And then if I hear somebody say something that I admire, I respect, say, do you have a business card on you? I like to stay in contact with you. Of course they do. And I get their business card. And I, my, my contest is to see how many business cards I can walk away with, not how many I can give out. It's a different game I'm playing. Different game I'm playing. Oh, that's not I don't know. Go ask Alexis. Just a minute. I'm oh, almost done with the coach. Okay, get orange. That's fine. Done. Yes. Okay. So communicate with at least the 15 people twice a month. 15 people twice a month and call them and say, hey, you know, my name is whatever your name is. And I'm just calling to see how can I be of service to you? How can I assist you today? Right? So come on, get out the camera, please. Okay, go help. Go ask a It's not. It's nothing wrong with that orange. Let her peel it for you. OK, so this is what I'm saying to you. So those are the five things you, do. you need to relax. You need to change. You need to watch. You need to listen. And you need to communicate daily. This is daily. Do you hear me? This is good. This is daily. The daily regimen for materializing your winner's image, not to think about it one time and say, Tracy, that was a great, fantastic Facebook live. And then go on back to doing what you've been doing the past 48 years wrong. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm not here to just say this for no apparent outcome. I want your outcome to be the outcome that you fantasized about in the first step. So now we're turning this theory into a fact. This is how you get it from out of your head 
into your life. So yeah, the secret might be all about getting it into your head. You got to get in your head first. Do you realize that most people don't even dream at all? At all. So at least you got to do that first. But is that the end all be all? No. Now we got to take it another step. Now we've got to start communicating. We got to start looking, watching. We got to start listening. We got to start relaxing and dreaming. We got to start doing these things that get it from just the visualization state into a more active state in our lives. Do you understand? You got to start doing that. Right? Okay, great. Now that you, good job, Annie. Now that you've done that or that you're going to be doing that daily, now you need to write another statement of who you are, your winner's image in the present tense. Write it again. See, there was a difference when you wrote it the first time. When you wrote it the first time, it was like a fantasy, right? We hadn't tested it yet. You were thinking about it. Oh, it would be nice. It would be great to do that. But now we've confirmed. We've confirmed that now. We've confirmed that now we are able and we've confirmed that we are willing. And once you put that energy of I'm able and I'm willing, now when you write it, it's different. It's different. Say different. different. It's different. Right, Pooh? Yes. It's different. So you've got to write it again, but now this time with your stamp of ability and your stamp of willingness on it. And once you have your stamp of ability and willingness on it, now your statement has a different energetic internal meaning, even though the words might even appear the same. Many of them. Many of them may appear the same, but energetically it's different because you change the way you feel. Before it was just a fantasy. Now you know that you're able to accomplish it because God's giving you the ability. And now you're saying you're willing. So God has already given you what you need to accomplish it. Now you gotta be willing to go out there and put in the work for it. And if you're able and you're willing, and then you write the statement again, I am so happy and grateful now that I'm overseeing my 10 100. That's right, baby. Chairman 100, right? Overseeing my $10 million company, Pretty Fly Enterprise LLC. I am impacting hopeful entrepreneurs and teaching them skills of success and free enterprise. It's all come together. And now I am rich. I am wealthy. I am in love all at the same time. Um, my husband and I read together, we meditate together, and we believe in transformation. I am so happy and grateful now that I am free from my past and only eager about what exciting part is next for me in my life. Like it's different now when you know that you can do it. And now that you said, I'm willing to do it. Now it's like, oh man, let's get the party on the road. Let's get this show on the road, right? That's how it works. Okay. So then it goes through a whole bunch of different things about how to relax and change and all this different stuff. And I'll go through these five steps in more detail another time, but let's hurry up and let's get on. Let's get on to um, our last phase, right? Let's get on to um, our, hold on. We, did we do our last phase? Yes. We did our last phase, Saya. Yes. You sure? There's one more to go. Oh, wait a minute. We did all three of our, um, oh, yeah, we did all three of them. Okay, so let me make sure I break it down for you. So the fantasy part was when you thought about it, you got your people, you got the characteristics, and you wrote your own fantasy out. The theory part was, are you willing, you're, you're trying to turn it into a, like a hypothesis, right? Like a hypothesis. So now it's a theory. And now you have to test your theory. Am I able or am I willing? If you said yes to I am able and I am willing, then that your theory now becomes a fact, right? That's how we move to step three. And then step three is now how do we materialize it? How do we turn it into a fact? By doing those five steps, by relaxing, by reviewing, you know, uh, by changing, right? By, uh, who is that? Lisa? Lisa, if you're going to write it down, number two, darling, is change, right? Don't just say it's not review. Review is not the step. It's not the action step. No, the step number one is relax. The step number two is change, okay? The step number three is watch. The step number four um, is listen. And then the step number five is communicate, okay? Step number two is change, not review. Write the word change. Write the dang word down because that is what people are most resistant to is the change part, 
You want to stay who you are, live how you live, have what you have, be where you are, have the friends you have, have the excitement you have, have the life you have while simultaneously having a different life. So you want to be bipolar. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying you got to learn how to control that. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So that's how you turn your theory into a fact. It's by going through the daily five point program for materializing your winner's image. So if you guys have got what I'm saying today, then now you got work to do. There shouldn't be anybody bored. There shouldn't be anybody every day saying, I don't know what I need to do today. There shouldn't be anybody saying, how do I get successful? There shouldn't be anybody saying, how do I get rich? How do I get wealthy? How do I become the person I need to become? This is how I just told you, you got your pyramid up there. You got fantasy at the top. You got theory at the bottom left and you got fact at the bottom right. You got your fantasy, which you're going to write down. You're going to get your people. You're going to extract their qualities. You're going to start and pull them into your atmosphere, into your realm. And you're going to start thinking about those things and write out your own fantasy. Well, write out. This page already. That's right. Write out your own fantasy. Then step two is you're going to ask yourself, are you able and are you willing? If you are able and you are willing, now you have a theory that you can test. Now you have a theory that you can test. And then we're going to turn that theory into a fact. How are we going to turn it into a fact? We're going to follow our five step, our daily five step program for materializing that image, which is what? Relax, change, watch, listen, communicate. And I gave you the details on how all of that works. I gave you the details on how all of that works. So guys, this is Money Monday. In order for you to get the money that you want, live the life that you want, have the lifestyle that you want, all of that that you want, you have to first be willing to implement the winner's image. You have to be willing to adjust your winner's image. If you do not have the image of the person and the life and the lifestyle that you want deep in your subconscious, you will continuously, res uh, you will continuously revert back to the image that has been planted in your image, in your brain, in your subconscious from the time you were Josiah's age. And you don't even know that that's been planted in there. You don't even know what the teachers and the first grade teacher and the preschool teacher said to you that's still stuck in there that you can't get out because most of our parents, most of our parents weren't as aware as we are now about the importance of what goes in this little mind, right? Mm -hmm. What? I'm looking for my farmer's basket. Okay, we'll get you some farmer's basket. Not today. Okay, guys. So now you know what to do. You got to brainwash yourself. You have got to get all that rut and that gook and that soot and all of that extra up out of there because it's weighing you down. It's not helping you. It's not serving you. And you got to replace it with the right stuff. This is how you replace it. This is the formula. This is the works that's with faith without, that says faith without works is dead. This is the works. This is the works. This is why you can see so many people that don't let they work hardly at all make a lot of money because this is not the physical work. It's not. It's not the physical work. That's why people look like they're chilling all the time and they're making all the money. How? And you busting your butt every day for 10, 12, 20 hours a day trying to get shit done. Why? Because you're not working the right way. You're working the physical way, which is what your image was that they gave you when you were a kid. And that's the only way you know how to manifest stuff. And what I'm telling shh, what I am telling you is that you can only manifest stuff that you first create in the spiritual and then it will come out in the physical. But if you don't know how to create it in the spiritual, if you don't know how to create it in the spiritual, it's more than just asking God. It's more than saying a dang prayer. It's more than going to church on a Sunday. If they not teach you this in church, then you got to question that church. It's more than just, oh God, please. It's more than just having believe God going to do something. It's works. The faith, the belief that the God is going to do it without the works, it's dead. So if all they teaching you is the faith part and all they teaching you is the belief part and all they teaching you is the tithe part, then it's dead. That's why y'all still struggling. 
but you're going to church every single Sunday and you got your family going and your grandmama going, your mama going, your daddy going, your son going, your father going, your this and that. And everybody been going for a hundred years and ain't nothing changed in the cycle of your family legacy. It's all the same. You live in the same house. You live in the same neighborhood. The liquor store is still across the street from the church. That's the way it works. I'm from the inner city. I was saying that every inner city I'm in, it's a liquor store and it's a church in the same vicinity. If you can't see that that is orchestrated and you don't see that there's got to be a different way than what they're telling you, then you are completely blinded by what is going on. And you, my friend, are a victim of already being brainwashed. You, my friend, are a victim of the societal robotics that they've implanted inside of your subconscious and you can't figure out why you can't get to the next level it's because your subconscious all it knows is what you've already programmed it consciously and unconsciously deliberately and passively it only knows that and until you take an active step in changing that you will always get at different varying levels the thing that you've always gotten you will always have the same experiences with different people over and over and over again you will get a new job and have the same drama on the new job that you had on the old job and it's different people in a different building with a whole different company with different phone numbers and a different address how was that even possible? Because everywhere you go, there you are right there again. You are not changing. So you're taking your same self everywhere. So you have got to wake up. You have got to start seeing that the change starts with you. This is why Michael Jackson say, I'm looking at, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm starting with the man in the mirror, he said. I'm asking him to change his ways. That's what Michael Jackson said years ago. Years ago, Michael Jackson said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. You got to change you. You got to do this process. It's more than just belief. And it's more than just faith. And it's more than giving your money to the church. It's more than that. All of it together makes for a very great life. But any piece of the recipe without the rest of the piece of the recipe don't give you the apple pie. If you got the sugar and you got the apples, you can't be like, oh, I got the sugar and I got the apples. That should be the apple pie. What's the problem? Like you said, oh, I got the faith and I believe in God. And I believe in God. That ain't the problem. No, that is the problem. You don't have enough. That ain't all there is. Is that a big portion? Of, is the apples a big portion of apple pie? Oh, uh, yeah. It's what makes it apple pie, the apples. But the apples by itself don't make apple pie. And the sugar with the apples, you can't mix that up in a bowl. And all of a sudden, you got apple pie. You need the other stuff. Regardless of how insignificant you think the other stuff is, it's imperative that you have a crust. It's imperative that you might have those eggs in there. For people that are vegans, you might not have the eggs, you do something else, right? But it's imperative that you have other ingredients besides the apples and the sugar. It's imperative that you want to change your life, that you have more than just the faith and the belief in God. You need to now have the works. Because it's the faith with the works, not just the faith and not just the works. Because the faith without the works, y'all know that don't work. Y'all know that don't work. You've been going to church all your life and you don't have what you want. You know that doesn't work. Just be honest with yourself. That without the works doesn't work. Especially with the wrong, the wrong type of works. Nobody taught you this works because they don't want you to know this works. Because this is the works that actually transforms you. They give you the works that keep you inundated and, and grounded down with so much crap. You can't even think about your fantasy. They don't want you to know what really works. And then the reverse, if you have the works without the faith, you know, that don't work either. You can work yourself into the ground and don't have nothing and work all the days of your life and don't have nothing. Why? Because the faith without the works don't work and the works without the faith don't work. So you better have your faith and your works rocking. And if you don't know how to get your works rocking, I'm telling you, your faith ain't going to be enough. So it's time to get busy, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get to work. It's time to elevate. It's time for the next level. It's time to evolve. It's time for that whole evolution in your life that you've been saying that you want. Either you with it right now or you're not. Like the thing says, are you able, everybody able, because God gave you the ability. And then here's the big one. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? 
So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close out the call. We have definitely gone beyond what I like to go, right? We've been over an hour even still. And so guys, I want y'all to understand this. This is what? A winner's image. A winner's image. A winner's image. You have to build your winner's image. And without your winner's image, anything you try to attack, anything you try to achieve, anything you try to accomplish, it's going to backfire on you because you don't have the right image that is in alignment with the thing that you want. So if you would just simply take the time and put in the work, and I know it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to be challenging. I know it might be boring. I know it might sound like it's not working, but I promise you everything else you've already been doing don't work. So why would you not listen to something that you haven't done that has the most propensity to work that has been proven over and over again to work that other successful people do on a regular basis that's been proven to work why would you not just do the thing that can work even if it feel a little weird or a little odd because you're comfortable in being the way you are you gotta stretch and you gotta grow and that's my message for you today so if you found value in today's broadcast, guys, please, I hope that you have been sharing this. Please continue to share it. If you watch it again, come back. If you weren't able to write down what I was telling you to write down because you're at work or you're driving or you're doing something that you couldn't do that, please come back and watch this again and again and again and again and again and get the notes and write it down. And then after you write it down, don't put your notebook to the side. Don't put your notebook to the side and it ain't never. See, see my notebook opens up. Look, my notebook opens up to the pages I was the, mo the, the most recent on. Look by yourself. Why? Because I open the book so much that I stretch it and I twist it and I turn it. If your book, if your book don't, it ain't like this. See how they got like that gap right there? If your book is still flat because you write notes, but you ain't opening and studying it, you're kidding yourself. Don't fool yourself. You're not fooling me because it's your life. It's your life. Don't fool yourself. Okay? You're not fooling God for sure. And guess what? You're definitely not fooling yourself. You just think you're fooling yourself. And that's the game that they play with you. So please share this broadcast. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Please take heed. Please listen. Please adhere. Please take action. Remember, my whole goal is to inspire you into action. I think it's great that people say, oh, Tracy, you inspired me. Amazing. But I don't want a fan. I want people that get results. So my goal is to inspire you into the action. These are the action steps I'm giving you. I don't, I'm not giving you a sermon. I'm giving you, a, 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 I'm giving you an instructional for life. You take this and you start living by this and practicing this. Now you start teaching people at your church this, watch change happen. Watch change happen. You start teaching the real works that go along with the faith and see what happens. Mark my words. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next Monday, same time, same place for Money Mondays. We're back tomorrow, actually, with Mr. Terry Thomas for um, Tuesdays of our Dream Team Midday Motivational Call. So I'm so excited uh, that you guys are tuning in. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will see y'all next week. Money Mondays in full effect. Live life free. Later.